Welcome to another edition of the Social Proof Podcast. And I'm mad. Furious. Furious. Flaming. Uh, Scorching. Upset. Torched. Blazed. Hold on, it's my turn. Okay. Uh, uh. Coming apart at the <laughs> seams. All right, let's just go. <laughs> All right, so look, man, we are live. So me and Donnie are recording. And our communities, Actionable CEO Morning Meetup, they get to listen in while we record live. So this is one of the perks of being in our community. So if you're not in our community, you need to stop waiting and delaying to get this information because you're a few weeks behind. Anyway, I asked the question before we start recording, how many of you are intentionally, it was another word I used, intentionally and, what was the other word? Intentional and focused pretty much, on making more money in your business this week than you made last week. Focused, intention. How many people, the goal is to make more money this week than to make last week? One person commented, Bree said, what does that say? Scroll down a little bit so I can see that. Bree said, yeah, up, 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 up. There you go. And, def and definitely intentionally about to make more money this week. Bree said that. But no one else commented, Siobhan, you late. Yes, I'm intentionally and focused on making more money. No, you're not. If you were, you got excited when you heard it. Bonnie. You know what? <clears throat> I think I think we have our episode topic today. I think I know what we talk what we're talking about. And and the topic for today is how to know if I am being serious about building my business. Or playing. Am I serious or am I playing? Mm. Am I serious or am I playing about being an entrepreneur? Let's go. Let's go. With this question, you just opened it up. First things first, are you hiding? Are you hiding your business right now? Mm. Do people know that you are in business? But even deeper than that, are you afraid to communicate your goals because you're afraid to fail out loud? Let's talk about the hiding. Mm -hmm. Let's talk. Are you hiding? Are you hiding? Are you That's hiding? That's a strong question. Yeah. Because hiding means you have to, hiding means you have to intentionally make sure someone doesn't find you. So me and my daughter, I play hide and seek all the, all the time. So she'll hide somewhere. One time I really couldn't find her. She she is she said it's so good, and I I lifted up where she was and I still didn't see her. And normally I'd be playing, I'd give her a little time, but I really couldn't find my baby. I'm like, yo, what is going on here? And she pops out like, hey, I'm here. So she was intentional about me not finding her. Now, as an entrepreneur, and I don't think anybody would say it out loud, right, Donnie? But some people are intentionally hoping that no one finds out about their business because then they'd have to explain the business to somebody. Mm -hmm. They'd have to actually service the client. Mm -hmm. Not only that, um, you have to admit to the public that you are working on a thing. Mm. And when you have to reveal that you're working on a thing, now you're facing scrutiny. Now you're facing scrutiny from the people that are close to you, closely connected to you. And typically when we're hiding our business, it's because we are in fear of judgment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why build it if you're going to hide it? Why even pay for that LLC if you're going to hide it? All that time, energy, and attention focusing on building the thing out. You get really, really excited mm -hmm. until it's time to go to market. And now you're hiding. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Why spend all that energy, all those notebooks, all that time, all these conversations, all these questions? Why spend so many years watching the Social Proof podcast and podcasts like Social Proof just to hide your business? Are people in love with building it and not growing it? Like, are no. do people find passion in building it in terms of, Oh my gosh, I have the most amazing idea. Oh, 
that logo is not right. It needs to look more like this. And he spent weeks on the logo and the colors and the branding and the website. Not I, I, The website's not ready yet. We got to fix these three words on there. I don't like the placement of it. Let's put all that together. We'll get the product. We'll print them up. We got to make sure the, the, the shipping is right and the packaging and all that stuff. And I think people spend years. I'm start. I think you, I think you identified it, Donnie. Yeah. People spend years in that mode because they are in love with that process, but they don't do all of that to take it to the market or to live their dreams or to make more money than they thought they could make. They only do that because they love doing that. They, they're in love with thinking about it, not being about it. Mm. They're in love with the thinking process, not the working process because interestingly enough, um, I speak, we speak to entrepreneurs all the time mm -hmm. and I see so many entrepreneurs who stay in the phase of tweaking a logo too long, trying to build their own website or landing page and staying in that, like you do something, you think about it, you do something, you think about it, you never put it to work. Yeah. So we're staying in this, um, in this visionary stage too long. We're staying in this thinking about it phase too long. We are staying in this market research phase too long. And it's not that you don't know how to start. You're hiding. Yeah. I, but I don't, I, I mean, I think, I think that's one category of the person who is thinking, strategizing, all that kind of stuff. But then you graduate to the person that's actually doing the work, the, mm -hmm. like the building, building something does take work, yeah, right? In sure. terms of, you're working on a, uh, you're building a car, right? It takes work because you got to mm -hmm. really go in every day into your garage and build this car. Yeah. I think the, the, the third phase, which people really don't want to cross over into, is opening that garage door and letting people see the thing that you built. Mm, so I think that brings us to number two. How do I know if I'm serious or if I'm playing mm -hmm. about my business is you have to have a willingness to start have to have a willingness to start you have to have a willingness to start like you can be so focused you can be and I've seen this I've done this you know where you may have all these ideas that you we've done it together yeah. we have all these ideas and we spend hours talking about them talking through them being excited about them mapping it mapping it out on paper and we've invested all this time and energy sometimes even money and we don't start we haven't we're not serious because we haven't been willing to start. We haven't been willing to find the time, clear the time, clear the space. All we've been willing to do was strategize. Yeah. All we've been willing to do was get together and mastermind and connect about a thing. But we haven't taken that initiative to actually start it. Mm -hmm. And so your willingness to start is an indication of the initiative that you're willing to self-impose mm -hmm. to get this thing started. It's on paper. Yeah. You've done the research. Maybe maybe you've, you've invested a little bit of money. You've opened the accounts. You've established the LLC. And when we're talking about starting, I'm not talking about establishing the LLC. Yeah. I'm not talking like that's the pre-start. Yeah. I'm not talking about the bank account. I'm not talking about the mailing address. And I'm talking about starting. I'm talking about putting something out there to ask for customers, to solicit mm -hmm. for business. That is your start. Your website, your all that stuff, all those things are your pre-start phase that you do before you can start the business. It's like if you had a brick and mortar, when you get the location, that's your pre-start. Now you've got to put some inventory in there and we're mm -hmm. working through our pre-start phase, our pre before we're ready to start phase. The day that you get your inventory in there, the day that you are able to, um, you've got your marketing materials. You've received everything. Now you need to let people know you have things available for them. Now you need to solicit for customers. Yeah. That is your start. So why, one, people really fool themselves into thinking that they started because it does take hard work to get it off the ground, to get it ready mm -hmm. for the public. It does take hard work. Yeah, for sure. Right? And I think a lot of people fool themselves into thinking that that's the work and that's why they're exhausted. But like I said, like opening the garage door to show people what you built. Why do you think that is such a big struggle, even though you spent so much time and energy and attention on building it? 
Yeah. And it's right. I believe it's a struggle because, again, it goes back to fear. It's like, okay, as long as you have control of the outcome when you're in that pre-start phase, Mm -hmm. when you're starting versus started, right? So I have control of the outcome with my website. I know that I'm going to pay somebody and I will get the result. I'm going to get the website. I have control over the outcome of the LLC, control of the outcome over establishing the corporation and all the or the bank accounts and all this stuff. When I put myself out there and I post that flyer Mm -hmm. and I say our doors are open and we're ready for business, I do not have the control of the outcome. It's like you hit post and you run like because you don't know that a customer is coming. You don't know that money is going to be generated. Uh, Maybe you don't feel like you've done enough research to know that you're really putting out an offer that your community needs. Right. And that's the part. People are afraid of the unknown outcome. A hundred percent. Goodness gracious. Listen, I feel for everybody that's listening to this right now and you feel a way in terms of, you know, this is you. You know that you can continue to keep yourself busy with busy work. But now that it's time to actually show the world and take it to the market, ask somebody for a sale. Like Donnie said, you aren't in control of that. So you're afraid of the outcome because you can't control it. Mm-hmm. And I think if we were too excited in the building of it and we're telling people we're working on something, we're working on something, we're working on something. Now the anxiety hits of, am I going to live up to the hype that I said I was going to be doing? Yep. Can I live up to that? Can I live up to it? And that is a real fear. Listen, we are not even here to bash. I was upset, but now I'm, I'm starting it. to, yeah, I'm starting to feel that I'm feeling where people are coming from because you have this idea of how something's going to work out. How embarrassing is it? Not even to other people, because in the grand scheme of things, other people don't care. Yeah. You feel embarrassed. I saw, you know, Maddie posted this video. I guess it's a show where you talk for a while, and I think it's like virtually, or you're dating, and I don't know if you see, I don't know how it works, but you have this whole wedding, and you get to the altar, and that's when you decide if you're going to stay with somebody. Oh, isn't that that Love is Blind show? They just did the... um the season finale or something like that. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, I think that was the name mm-hmm. of it. And that guy, mm-hmm. AD, Oh no, the girl is AD. The guy I think is clay. Mm-hmm. Cause it's viral all over the internet. Oh, imagine that. Yo, the pain of it all. I think it's all good. I'm t- we got the, br- the bridesmaids wedding dress fitting this whole time. To- actually, I think it's a very toxic show actually, because you are getting these people's hopes up. The process of getting your wedding dress fitted, makeup done, you got your loved ones there. Your whole family's there. Your whole family's, your your friends are there. Your friends are there. The world is there via national TV. That man got up on that altar. And said, I'm not ready. I am sorry. It wasn't even, I'm not ready. He said something more painful, almost like, pretty much, you ain't it. (laughs) (laughs) You ain't the one. Not that I ain't ready. I don't want you, pretty much. And because I thought, when I just saw the clip, I said, ain't no way. Because I'm thinking (laughs) in my mind, this is a regular, y'all got together, y'all was together for a while, y'all got the marriage, and then you get on the altar and say, I don't want you. But it it was a show. But when I saw it initially, my, it was almost like a sword through my heart. Mm. When he said that, and I looked at that woman's face, and those tears began to flow. Oh my God. Yeah, that was that was bad. Um, and what's interesting to me is more people sign up easily. Like it's easier for people to sign up to be on shows like that than it is for them to post about their business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But in their head, they think the same thing is going to happen. They're gonna open up their business, announce it, and the world is gonna say, We don't you want ain't you. it. You're not it. This ain't it. We don't want you. Go back to the drawing board. Mm, Go back to the drawing board. And here's the thing. What if that does happen? Yeah. You have to be ready to deal with the what ifs, right? But you can't stay stuck because of them. But we do really have to 
like pre-think the outcome. One of the strongest pieces of advice that I that I've been given in my career in personal development is to think of and I teach this now because it 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 resonated so much with me it made a difference. When you are going after a thing, think about all of the possible outcomes and how you would respond to them. And this is actually a lesson that I learned through some sales training, right? So when you are about to prepare for a sales call or whatever, you pre-think through what the objections are going to be so that if you are a really skilled salesperson, you know how to handle those objections out of the gate. So I know what to do if somebody says, oh, I don't know, I need to talk to my spouse about it. I know what to do if somebody says, oh, let me call around to this competitor and find out. You have to know what to do in the event the world rejects you for whatever the possible reasons are that you might get that rejection. It could be your price. What if people aren't feeling the price? Maybe they're not feeling the branding. Maybe they're not feeling you. Maybe it's your personality that they don't like and they don't think you're professional enough. You have to be able to know enough about what you're putting out there to identify. This is where your research comes in. What could possibly make this not work? What are the odds that I have stacked against me, including your personal dynamic? Maybe I have a spouse who won't be supportive. Um, Maybe they won't come to the grand opening. How am I going to feel about that? How am I going to process this? If you can get ahead of the problem before the problem presents itself and already think through, this is possible. This is how it's going to make me feel. But this is how I rebound. You will survive at a much faster rate. You'll move through that because it's like, oh, I knew this was possible. Mm-hmm. I knew you could come. Here's how I'm going to deal with that. Let me, t- let me ask you if this is a toxic answer or a way of thinking. I am going to launch and I'm going to build it out and I'm going to offer it to the public. But in my mind, I always come up with a bunch of excuses why it didn't work if it didn't work. In your I like pre-plan the excuses. So last year at Podcast Summit, I'm like, uh, we wanted a thousand, seven fifty came, but I wasn't even sure the seven fifty were coming. Mm-hmm. So in my mind, I already planned on the fact that we did it on a Sunday and Monday, and we just picked bad days. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I pre-planned if there's there's not that many people. How are we going to make it look good? Well, y'all, for sure. You, first off, you play it on this place, you can hold X amount of people with chairs. Mm-hmm. It'll hold half the amount of people with tables. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, some tables in that oh, thing. Oh, bro. If it was 300 people, it would have just, we wanted to give y'all room. We mm-hmm. just get over COVID. <laughs> mm-hmm. Spacing, social distancing. We want to give you That's some space. Why. You should have, so. we want you to take so many notes. <laughs> And be so well prepared that we've given you the space that you need. But here's the thing. Hold I don't, on, hold on. You ever did an event and a lot of people didn't come and you said, yeah, we wanted it to be intimate. Oh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. For sure. We've done that before. Like, absolutely. We want it. And, and so here's the, we have y'all, we're being honest. This is literally our journey. Me and David have planned events and we're like, Let's just keep this at 100 people, right? Mm-hmm. And then we, we're we doing whatever we're doing. And it's not usually out of fear for us. It's usually out of lack of execution, mm-hmm. right? Yep. But we'll say, okay, we'll open this up to 100 people. And then as we're going on and we're looking at the ticket sales and we're checking in, we're <laughs> like, I mean, 40. a strong 40. <laughs> well, a strong 40 will work for sure, right? We have done that more times than not. And when the 40 come, we really wanted to keep this intimate, We want to keep this, this intimate. <laughs> Like we, here, here's the thing. I want to be able to touch every person in this room. We're going to keep this intimate because I really, I'm, I'm really invested in your outcome. And that's, and that's the truth. But if a hundred people would have shown up, I would have still been really invested in your outcome. Or if the hundred people showed up, like, yo, we wanted to make sure y'all had enough people y'all can connect with mm-hmm. and communicate with. And that real way. relationships, real, real relationships. relationships. But the difference between us is we are going to do it. Anyway, anyway, we're going to do it because we're going to do it. If however, 10 people show up for sure. We're going to be able to handle the outcome because we're not emotionally tied to the outcome. We just know whatever happens, it was supposed to happen that way. That's how it was supposed to be designed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But go ahead. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> we have we have done that. Um, I think number three 
to this is you know that you're serious and not mm-hmm. playing if you have a clearly defined goal. Yes. You have to have a clearly defined goal. And here's the thing about your goal. Your goal can evolve over time. I believe that people don't set goals because one, they're not clear in their outcome, but mm-hmm. two, they don't want to be restricted to just this. And you have to understand that if you set a goal of like a thousand new customers in a, in a year's time frame, you're not stuck there. It's just a target. It's mm-hmm. a reference point. It's like, here's your bullseye. Think about shooting darts. We have the bullseye, but you still score points if you hit close to it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a bar. That's You're a bar. still going to score if you hit close to it. I'm reading 12 week year. We've been talking about this. I'm reading, rereading 12 week year. And in the book, it says that when it comes to goals, goals can sometimes be so dangerous. And these to do lists can be so dangerous to, toward the goal because in a person's mind, you feel the person who set the goal, they feel like they have to hit that 100 percent mark every single time. But the truth of the matter is when interviewing extremely successful people, they've admitted to operating at. 85%. If you operate at just 85% of what that goal is, you're still doing an excellent job, 100%. right? And studies have shown that if you operate at just 70, 75%, it'll be a little bit more difficult for you, but you can still accomplish the goal. 100%. It's not going to be as smooth sailing as if you were maybe at 85, 90%, mm-hmm. but you'll still hit the goal. And I don't want you to miss this. Your goal is just the center of that bullseye. That's all it is. It's the center of that bullseye. Not hitting that goal doesn't make you a failure. You will still put points on the scoreboard if you hit somewhere in the area. Yeah, if in baseball, if you bat like 300, meaning you strike out seven times out of 10, you make millions. You make that 70%. That's 30%. Oh, 30%, right. That's 70% failure. For sure, for sure. 30% success. We have probably failed more times than we won, right? But For sure. It only takes that one it t- you could you can strike out the entire game but that one last at bat where you got three runners on base and you hit it out the park, nobody even remembers those last nobody strikeouts. Nobody remembers. And let me tell I'm I'm in the middle of failing right now. I stay in the middle. I <laughs> You guys, I am in the middle of failing right now, Mm. right? But I'm still going to make seven figures. (laughs) It's still going to happen. And and there are things like, like right now, for example, there are some of my sites, like all my things were built at the same time. And there's there's this one plugin that was installed on my site, on all my sites. And so now every single site, that was built at that time has gone down. Right. Right. And so I spent all this time, I'm spending time, time, time trying to figure it out. I bring on all these tech experts. They can't figure it out. There's some unique plugin that the last developer, the last tech team put in place and they coded it in a way that nobody could find what this was. Finally figured it out. Finally figured it out. Well, by the time we figure it out, we're in the middle of a system update and system change and all these different things. But it didn't stop me from generating business. I immediately told my team, like, don't send anybody there. Just send them straight to this part. Like, there are my normal steps, the way that I want the process to work, couldn't work. That doesn't mean that we don't do any work. That means that we figure it out. That means that even though we had all these automations and things that are supposed to trigger off this way, if that's not happening, guess what we got to do? We got to get pen and paper out. We got to get to work. Absolutely. We got to go back to the drawing board and we have to get to work. And that's just what it is. And so many people expect perfection or it's not even that they expect perfection. So many people invite their excuses in to have a seat. My excuses can't get comfortable in my house. I'm not inviting my excuses in to have a seat. I see that you're there. I know that you stopped by. I saw you at the door, Mm -hmm. but I'm busy. Mm -hmm. I'm busy figuring out how to get around this excuse. For sure. For sure. Man, I, I hope, I hope some people that saw that, some people that saw that or listened to you said, see, 
I've even started a business. If Donnie can't figure it out, Donnie's going through it. David's going through it. Of course. Why would I even start? But guys, you have to go through this. Mm -hmm. I want you to expect it. I want you to expect the hardships of it and go through it. I, I believe people don't launch their business for fear of failure, but I don't want the goal initially to be success, period. The, let me explain that. Your goal shouldn't be, your main goal shouldn't be success for those that are just starting. For some of you, success should be the fact that you started. For some of you, the goal should be the fact that you're actually willing to make three calls a day. You want to go vend it two places a month. The fact that you did it should be the win because this is a learning process. Listen, I, we've been we've been entrepreneurs for decades now. Decades. How many losses do you think we took over decades? How many lessons over decades? It's not the wins that help you win. It's the losses that help you win. You lose and figure out what you did wrong. I know what, I, I don't, I'm not a real tech guy, but I know there's certain questions Donnie's going to ask the next time somebody builds a website. For sure. But how do you learn that? You go through you what go you're through going the through. Process. You go through what you're going through. And, and that's the thing. And I think that can be a number four, I believe. Mm -hmm. Number four is embrace the losses yes. as you would embrace the wins, right? Yes. And when you say embrace the loss, yes, it hurts. Yes, it's an inconvenience. Yes, it makes things more difficult. But what it doesn't do is make anything impossible. Mm -hmm. Nothing becomes impossible. And whenever you're going through like what with what I'm dealing with, okay, so we can't do this. This isn't working. We can't do this. We can't figure it out. Instantly, my mind goes to, well, what can we do? How, what, what can we do right now temporarily? No matter how ugly it is, no matter how imperfect it is, what can we do to still do business, yeah. period? And that's where your mind has to go. You have to look at these um, losses as lessons, right? Mm -hmm. And you hear that all the time, but you literally have to sit down and process like, okay, what does this lack of support mean? If I'm not getting support from the people that I really, really wanted it from, mm -hmm. then where can I get the support, right? Um, how can I put, and, and then you would go to, okay, well, my spouse isn't supporting, my family isn't supporting. Let me go on to Facebook and find other people who are into this mm -hmm. and leverage them as support. Let me find somebody that I can consider an accountability partner and leverage them as support. Let me find the one or two people that are actually cheering for me and leverage them for support. Let me support myself at the highest level and just leverage my own self as support. Like mm. you have to look at that. Your website's gone down. Okay, well, you can't do this. Can you go to Wix real quick and throw up a templated website today so that you can still handle business like clockwork? Your team isn't coming in. Okay, who can we get to come in and help today? What can I do extra? What can I take off of my calendar to handle these fire issues right now? Like it has to work or it has to work. We're literally dealing with it right now. One of the social proof producers is out on paternity leave. Shout out to Zell. Um, shout out to Zell and Kai for having their baby. They just had a baby boy. Um, and But that makes it more difficult in the studio. We've got all these shows that are being produced. Um, Dave needs a full time videographer. I have a I need a part time videography. But then there's all these other shows that have to be produced around it. Well, we don't quit the shows. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we don't we don't quit the shows. We don't quit the shows. We don't go into panic mode. We sit down and we figure it out. And the conversation that we had to have around it got a little, you know, like, OK, we got to figure this out. Yeah. Right. And it, be, it was a it wasn't a fun conversation to have because there are inconveniences that have to be made in the meantime. But at the end of the day, you got to do what's best for the network. You have to do what's best for the business. You have to do what's best for the final outcome. Nobody wants to change their schedule. We're on a routine. People don't yeah. welcome change. Yeah. Nobody wants to change anything around. Nobody wants to not see Zell sitting right there where Kay is sitting right yeah. now. Kay is sitting doing what Zell would normally be doing right now. Right. We have to figure it out. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> There's a lot of things you can do with five hundred dollars. I mean, you can have a night out with your significant other. You could buy some really expensive shoes. Well, really nice shoes are about double five hundred dollars. Um, you could buy a course, or you can learn something for five hundred dollars. 
but I have something better for you to do with the $500. I want to meet with you every single morning for the rest of your life. Well, maybe not the rest of your life, but every morning, Monday through Friday, for the rest of the year. I have information and game that have allowed me to build a successful business, a successful community, and a successful life all the way around. But I want to share that with you. But the only way we can accomplish this is not me selling you a course, not me giving you a one-on-one consultation, because even with that, you'll get the information, but you'll need more. I want to meet with you every single morning. Now, would I meet with someone every morning for 500 bucks for a year? And the answer is yes. Actually, we've been doing this thing since 2017. We have what's called the morning meetup. Every single month, we have a theme, whether it's social media, whether it's motivation, whether it's strategy, whatever it is, we have a theme for the month. And every morning in that month, we have a conversation around that topic. And I am giving a wealth of knowledge, not only myself, but a lot of friends, a lot of people that you see on this podcast, they join every single week. So you need a community of people that you can grow with and you need a coach. I'm your coach. The Morning Meetup is your community. Go to themorningmeetup.com. It's $499 and I will meet you every single morning for an entire year. Give it a shot. What are you going to do, y'all? I mean, you could live your whole life in fear if you want, but you have to embrace this stuff. You have to almost expect it. You know what I mean? Like there's certain... And I don't want to. I don't want to throw off anybody's uh, way of looking at things. Whether you know, you have a very positive mindset and nothing's going to rattle you. For me, I ex- I expect opposition. I'm 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 looking for the opposition because just throughout my life, life has trained me to that 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 opposition is coming. So I'm intentionally looking at it. Like uh, if you are on a first date and let's say you've had a bad dating experience, you have to look for the red flags. You can't be so positive and, uh, and, uh, pes- um, what's the pessimistic, word? not pessimistic, optimistic. You can't be so positive and optimistic that you think that every single person that you meet has the qualities that you pray for and put on your vision board. There's questions that have to be asked for you to identify. You have to be looking for the red flags. As I launch a business, I'm looking for the red flags. Doing an event, I'm looking for them. I'm expecting them. And I'm trying to get ahead of them before they come, right? But when they do come, Donnie, I'm not so heartbroken that it hit that way. Yeah. Because I knew it was coming. Yeah. So I think a lot of newer entrepreneurs, they expect business to run the way they saw it in their head. They launch, make $100,000 their first day, and they just ride off into the sunset. I'll be leaving my job three weeks later, yeah. and I'm going to get a Lambo. And I'm I, when I get all this money, I'll, pro- I'll be finding my spouse because I have more time to be intentional about that part of my life. And it's, uh, it don't work like that. You know, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking and I I want I want the people who are watching this right now. And even our guests that we have watching us live, I want you to take out a piece of paper or pull out your phone and I want you to write down at least five things that have gone wrong that you didn't stop doing. I have one. Five things that have gone wrong that didn't cause you to stop. That did not cause you. You did it again anyway. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> All right, give me one. Most grown adults have had a tragic sexual encounter. Mm. Mm-hmm. But it didn't stop you from getting it Having in. Having more encounters. <laughs> Tell me about your tragic. I mean, just to help the audience, what's your most tragic? So, for example, no, just <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, most adults, most grown people have had really bad sex. And all right, stop, don't use the word because it's kind of strong. And last time we were kind of graphic. Were we graphic? Not graphic. We but haven't been graphic. But listen, no, let me let me bring this point in. You've had it, just do it you and know, that okay. activity has far greater lifelong or far more dangerous outcome potentials mm-hmm. than you talking about your business. Mm-hmm. Many people have been in a car accident before. Total the vehicle. You're still driving. Driving your car every single day has far more significant pos- possible negative outcomes mm-hmm. than you posting about your business. And you've had some very, very rough 
nights after a long night of drinking. Of dr- but you, you even told God. Over the toilet. Over the toilet. That if God gets you out of this situation, you'll never pick up another bottle again. You'll never do it again. And look at you. You'll never do it again. Look at you last weekend. <laughs> you have you. grown men who are on basketball courts, 30s, 40s, 50s, mm-hmm. on the basketball court, tearing an Achilles, mm-hmm. messing their bodies up. They go through surgery. They go through painful physical rehab. Guess what they do as soon as they're better? We, Get we right back, back on that court. Get mm-hmm. right back. Literally causing permanent damage far beyond what posting about your business mm. or what being serious about your business can do to you. Like, and I want you to think about that. And and I'm not being funny here, but it's a mindset shift that has to happen. What are you telling yourself in those experiences? What are you telling yourself during those times that make you say, I'll try it again. Like think about that childlike imagination when your parents are teaching you how to ride a bike without training wheels for the first time and you're going to fall. Mm-hmm. You're absolutely going to fall. They prepare you for the fall. For sure. A hundred percent. Uh, Kay is here. Let's well, act like Kay is not here. We'll just okay. talk. We'll just talk. Okay. So, <laughs> hey, y'all didn't know anything that happens here is susceptible to be on a social group podcast. Right? <laughs> you okay, right? You know it's coming. You know it's coming. So, <laughs> I come in one day yeah. and Kay was like, hey, <laughs> I want to go to uh, Terrica's mastermind. She said, the tickets are out of control. She said, can you... Give me some of your Sky Miles. I was like, give me some of my Sky Miles. She asked that question like yeah. seriously. And then provided all the reasons why mm-hmm. I should give her some Sky Miles. Dave, you got a million Sky Miles, you give away. And then Reese was sitting right there too. I was looking at Kay and I said, Kay, I'm not about to give you no Sky Miles to book this flight. Because the next time Reese asked me for some Sky Miles, what am I going to say? No, <laughs> I can't do that. I would I would like, oh, Reese, some Sky Miles, right? <laughs> so <laughs> she's like. Okay, that's uh, a private conversation, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but she did some she did some work and she uh, she made about, she made some money on the work that she did for me. It's like a commission type work. Mm-hmm. She brought in some money and she makes some of that money. I was like, I can give you an advance on that. She's like, all right, cool. Next day, Terika's here, <laughs> and we're doing some f- some footage with Terika. Kay's like, "Hey, you got some sky miles? I want to go to your mastermind, and I want you to give me some sky miles." Kay has gotten comfortable. <laughs> here's the, here's the thing. Terika says, "I got you." Yes, uh. no problem. <laughs> so we start shooting the content with Terika, and then for some reason, I remember that Kay is in Terika's mastermind doing real estate. And I remember her posting about some real estate stuff. And I'm like, Kay, how many people have you talked to and asked for, you know, to, to invest in a property that you found or are they going to sell their property? All that kind of stuff. Guess what those answers are? None. So she's willing to ask me, Terika, relentless about going after this thing, mm-hmm. right? Mm. However... For, mm. it's, it's something about business and entrepreneurship that people are afraid to apply that same energy to. And then, Kay, after that session, I said, Kay, before you get home, ride through some neighborhoods and find out if some people try to sell their house. Look at some abandoned looking houses. Skip trace. Right, Kay? Did you do it? You did What'd that you day? find? But you did it? How many days since then have you done that? How many days ago was that? About a week ago. So it's been a week. It's been a week. You were very serious about getting there. You were be- very serious about getting to your potential solution. Mm-hmm. You learned about the solution. You yeah. took notes? Did you oh, take notes? Bro. At the mastermind. Oh, it's coming. But she's been okay. through some. But she knows how to break down formula. She she's do educating me on some real estate stuff. She so understands. You have, you it. have taken some notes during this process. Ah, oh, bro, she knows. Real, she knows real estate. So you've invested both time and energy, exhausted your brain power because you're having conversations around it. You've done some research, but you're not being consistent. 
Here's what's crazy. So and Terika brings up this point. She's like, all right, that's cool. So I'm I'm having a I'm having a field day with the whole Sky Miles thing, first off. <laughs> and Terika's like, yo, you you have a person who's actively, I'm on Zillow and LoopNet and Crexy every day. Every day I'm just looking at problems. I was on a call with, Tiff, shouts out to Tiffany Tyus. She does uh, tax sales, mm -hmm. right? So I'm on a call this morning with Tiffany and she's showing me these are the ones that's coming up for sale. Um, the tax sale is this coming Wednesday or next Wednesday or Tuesday, something like that, Tuesday. So it's April 2nd. Mm -hmm. So we're going to the courthouse steps. She's like, this is the research on the properties. This is what they owe. This is how much it's going to be. All that kind of stuff. So I'm actively looking at this stuff. And Terika says, you see a real estate investor every single day. Ouch. You could really be bringing him deals. So I'm going back to Sky Miles. I'm like, yo, she'll ask me from Sky Miles, but she's not going to ask me to invest in no property. And I sent her a property that I like. Ask me what she told me about the property. What did she tell you, David? Nothing. No I sent her one that I found that I like. No feedback. And I'm like, check it out. You know it's out of love, right, Kay? Okay. Uh, it, tough love. Tough, love, tough love, nonetheless. Yeah. But I want, I want us to be intentional. If we say we want something, let's go after it. Or let's not even say it at all. Let's just not. Let's just not say it. Let's just not say Let's it. just hold on to the whole idea. Don't try to make yourself, me, or anybody else believe that you're really wanting to. See, here's the thing. Talk to me. Let me tell you something about being in environments like this. And this brings me to number five, establishing a network of people who can help you. Have you asked for help, right? Here's the thing. There are going to be categories of people. And in this instance, there's going to be a category of people that you can share your dreams, goals, and ideas with. One category, you share your dreams, goals, and ideas, and they have nothing to say, right? Mm -hmm. They have nothing to say or nothing positive to say. Then you're going to have a category of people who you share your dreams, goals, and ideas with, and they're going to cheer you on, but they cannot help you. Mm -hmm. Then there's a category of people that you are going to share your dreams, goals, and ideas with. They are both going to cheer you on and be in a position to elevate you and Ooh, help you. This is good. You all are connected and everybody who's watching social proof podcast, you all are connected to two individuals here that cheer you on and can help you and elevate you. You cannot be around us talking about dreams, goals, and ideas and expect that we are not going to expect you to follow up with it. Mm. You cannot sit in this space and be a person who tries to convince us. We can tell immediately if you're serious or if you're playing. Yeah. You cannot be in front of me. Like I believe that people think that I'm so direct because I have expectations of you once you communicate your dreams, goals, and ideas. Mm. I have expectations. See, people have been letting you slide your whole life. Yep. People keep listening to all these ideas and they keep asking you about it and they keep accepting that you hadn't had time yet. The kids haven't gone off to school yet. You got to do this because of your spouse. When you get over the flu, people have been accepting that part of you for so long, but I am not that person. David Shands is not that person. Yes. You come around us and tell us that you want something. We're going to ask you what you're doing to get it. Mm -hmm. if, if, listen, if you don't say that you want something, I don't got nothing to say to you. I don't have anything to say. Some people just don't want anything. And that's fine. I, conversations I have with Reese. And come on, you knew you was next. But what I love about Reese is he is actively just trying to figure out what his thing is. Mm -hmm. And I'm cool with that. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, you figure it out. Mm -hmm. He's like, nah, not, not yet. But, you know, I think I like this. I think I'm about to try to do it. I'm 100% cool. Mm -hmm. But just know, once you say, this is where I'm directed. This is my target. Once you say that, just prepare yourself. Or just don't tell me. Don't tell me. My daughter gets so annoyed with me all the time. She'll come. She'll mention an idea. Deja, I don't know what she's done. She knows not to follow up with me anymore, right? <laughs> don't follow up with me because... Because I am a multiplier and I am going to help you. I am a you. multiplier. I am a multiplier. Oh, break, before you finish, get, break that down. I like that. If you present something that can grow to me and I have the ability to help you grow it, 
it's going to grow. If you produce an idea and a work ethic that can produce and yield a result and all you're missing is information that I have, I am going to multiply what you bring me. Mm, I like that. Period. And that's in. I am a multiplier. Somebody throw I that in the chat real quick. Are you a mul- are y'all a, are y'all multipliers? Just throw it in the chat real quick. I know I am a multiplier. Y'all got too many people who are dividers in your circle. Whoa. Ooh. You got to get more multipliers. Or are you a divider yourself? Or Anything are you, you a divider? Anything you get in your hands, mm-hmm. you start taking away. Mm-hmm. And then blame somebody else for the fact that it's divided. It's less than you started it's with. It's less than what you started out with. You can, I'm a multiplier. I don't even think in the concept of division. My brain just doesn't work like that. You can bring me very, very little. If you bring on it, if we're measuring things on a scale of zero to 100, if you bring me nothing, I can't multiply nothing. But Mm. if you just bring me one, if you just bring me 1% of something, I can help you multiply that. So for me, it looks like directness. For me, it looks like um, hard accountability. For me, sometimes it can even look like micromanagement, but it's because I instantly see the multiple. And I know that I can help you get there. Mm, so with number six, focus on multiplication, which that word is scary for some people if you've got this nasty relationship with math. But if you put in $100, your goal should be to multiply. It. Can mm-hmm. we take 100 to 200? I know you got this vision of millions in your mind, but when I got... Them first 72 t-shirts, when I printed them first 72 t-shirts, let's just say I spent $700 on it. My goal was to turn it into $1,400. My goal, I want to make six figures this year. But my first goal was, how do I multiply, the, how do I leave out of this situation, this interaction, with more money than I put in? I put in $700. I had $700 first. Mm-hmm. I put in $700. Now I have nothing. Mm-hmm. My first thing is, how do I get my 700 back so I can at least break even? Mm-hmm. I put my 700 to the side because I'm like, okay, I'm just going to print up 72 more t-shirts. Mm-hmm. But what I found was I had more shirts to make another 700 mm. twice. So I was able to like 3X, my 700 turned into 2100. Take the first 700 and my first goal is how can I double it? Yeah. How can I come in with more than I started with? Mm-hmm. But I, if in our head, if we don't make a million dollars in our first year, or we don't make six figures in our first month, we feel like we did something wrong. I'm telling you, if you can be a multiplier, if you can turn two into four, if you could turn a hundred into two hundred, yeah. you can win big. Yeah. But are you even thinking multiplication, or are you thinking division? And I know what it feels like. I know what that experience is to think either of those things. If you are focused on the divisive thoughts, you will not succeed. At least you won't succeed the way that you could potentially have succeeded if you were thinking duplicatable thoughts that multiply. Right. Mm -hmm. So I want you to just audit, like literally pause this episode right where you are and think about what when it comes to your business Maybe even where it even comes to your life, your relationships, your personal relationships, your marriage. Are we thinking thoughts that are more divisive? Meaning, are we thinking about all of the possible outcomes that take us further and further and further away from our goal? Or are we looking at things and analyzing them from a place of bringing us closer to our goals? Instead of saying, oh, man, I have to. Are we thinking, actually, I get to. Mm -hmm. Right. Man, I have to sit in all these meetings today at I get to sit in these meetings that are going to take my business and my information and skill set to the next level, right? I got to get up because I got an eight o'clock morning meetup call. You know what? I get to show up in the morning meetup at 8 a.m. And I know that I'm going to get a piece of information that's going to skyrocket my day. Man, I got to sit down after dinner and get with Donnie on actionable CEO at 730 at night or seven o'clock at night. I get to finish my evening being so pumped up that I can't wait to wake up the next day, yeah. right? Oh, I got this tech issue. I got to solve this tech issue. Issue. You know what? Today I got a tech issue. I get to sit down with some developers and learn so we know how to better execute this next time. Mm-hmm. Like, are we having multiplication thoughts 
or division thoughts. And it starts with your mindset more than it starts with your skill set. You know how many talented people are sitting around with the inability to perform and get any kind of a positive outcome because they're letting their thoughts override their talent? Mm. Letting their thoughts override their talent. Yeah. yeah. Guys are so talented, but the enemy is in your head. The inner, the enemy is the inner me. Mm -hmm. Your enemy is your I N N E R M E. Your inner me. Typically, the biggest enemy that you have is your own thoughts that you're For having inside sure. your head. I always, I hear this guy, um, a, a friend of mine, an old friend of mine. He used to always say. Um, the enemy can't win as long as we don't allow him within. The enemy can't win as long as we don't allow him within. Mm. So as long as we're keeping that enemy on the outside and we don't allow yeah. it to penetrate our thought process, our mindset, it can't win. I like that. It can't win. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm telling you, and I think people know that we don't really think about it mm -hmm. because all of the people throughout your life who told you, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it, but you're the person telling yourself you can't do it, you can't do it, you can't do mm -hmm. it. And if you have a group of people around just telling you that that is agreeing with your handicap, you're 100% around the wrong people. Mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest value in morning meetup, actionable CEOs, because there's you, if you come on and you let the inner me, that toxic thought mm -hmm. come out of your mouth, mm -hmm. there are people that are going to positively jump you. Period. Stomping it out. We're stomping uh, that enemy right on out of you. Oh, uh, they're going to beat you a positive stick. No, girl, you got this. No, you got this. You mm -hmm. got this. And if you stay in the environment long enough, you start to realize, whoa, well, maybe I, maybe, maybe, maybe I got this. Which brings us to number six, continuous learning. I think it's seven. Seven. Is it seven? Continuous learning, being in Facts. an environment of continuous learning. And the two best places to start or the three best places to start right now is making sure you're subscribed to Social Proof Podcast for conversations like this. But then taking it a step further and being a part of both the morning meetup and actionable CEO so we can un, uh, unpack conversations like this. Mm -hmm. Like you get to watch this information for free on Social Proof, but behind behind the doors, behind the walls, you get to come into Social Proof. You get to come in the morning meetup and you get to unpack conversations like this. Mm -hmm. Also, find local masterminds or masterminds that you have to travel to masterminds and conferences, seminars and workshops. It's not even just for the people who are on stage. You need the energy of all of these people who are aspiring to accomplish something around you. Mm -hmm. Every single time I like to, I learned this in network marketing and I do it today. In fact, I just put a post up. I believe it was yesterday asking I'm hungry for the next conference, the next mastermind. I learned in network marketing and this has been such a pivotal thought process in terms of building business for me specifically. Um, in network marketing, we have meetings called Super Saturdays, right? A Super Saturday might happen once a quarter mm -hmm. or something like that. But then you have these weekly meetings as well. So you have these in-person or now maybe even virtual weekly meetings that you show up to at a hotel or at somebody's house. And then maybe two or three times a year, you have your big conferences. And the idea, like, we're always building in network marketing. I'm saying we, like, I'm still in it. Mm -hmm. But in network marketing, I learned that you're always building from event to event. You're always building from event to event. So there's a super Saturday that's coming up and you are driving activity and productivity. We're putting challenges and awards and all kinds mm -hmm. of recognition and acknowledgement because when we get to super Saturday, you've had all this month to prepare and you can be rewarded. You can be praised and acknowledged for hitting your goal. Right. Mm -hmm. And so then when super Saturday comes, what happens? You built to the next Super Saturday. Now we set another goal, another set of achievements and recognition points for you to go from this Super Saturday to the next Super Saturday. So there's always a target, which is why I'm loving the 12 week year so much right now, because most people's target is December 31st. Mm -hmm. Let's create smaller targets to celebrate, acknowledge, reward, analyze, reset. Right. And if you start plugging into things like morning meetup, it's like, OK, 
from Monday to Tuesday. That can be your event. From Monday to Tuesday, from Tuesday to Wednesday, you're an actionable CEO. We meet every Tuesday. It's from Tuesday to Tuesday. I got to accomplish this thing. You come to Podcast Summit. Maybe you've got some goals for your podcast. It's like from event to event, from Podcast Summit to Podcast Summit. Yeah. This is what I'm looking to accomplish. Or we know that there's going to be an opportunity for us to work uh, together after the podcast summit from this to this, this is what it is. Seriously. I built my business for, from event to event. Mm -hmm. So I enjoy going to some kind of mastermind or conference at least every two months, two to yeah. three months max. If I'm going three months, which I'm pushing up on that right now, I start to feel depleted. That's why you made that post. That's why I made that post. I start like <clears throat> I'm, I'm on the edge. I'm on the edge. And what it means for me is when I say in that particular instance, building my business for event to event motivation, Jim Rohn says it, uh, motivation is fleeting, which is why we need, it's like, it's like taking a bath. We need it every single day. He yeah. says something along those lines, right? Motivation doesn't last. I am often not motivated to do a thing. I'm disciplined yeah. to do a thing. And that's, that's a difference, right? I have goals and I have to get, I'm grown. I'm yeah. responsible. I'm disciplined. But the motivation, it comes and goes. I sat down today and I'm like, Dave, I feel really good. I'm pumped up. We don't feel that way right. every single time we like sit that. down. But we got to sit down and do this. And so right now, I my body feels the way that I've trained myself to think. My body is like, oh, it's been a little long. It's been too long. We're coming up on third month. We got to find something to do. Yeah. And so for me, that when you're sitting in these environments, these masterminds, these seminars, these conferences, the energy in those rooms, in the audience, not even from the people on stage, the energy of just these hungry, successful people yeah. who are trying to get better. And I'm, I'm sitting here on the front row and I look across from me and there's a billion dollar business owner over here getting the same information. It's like confirmation that I'm in the right room, validation that I'm on the right track. It's fuel for me. It's inspiration. It's everything I need to like give it another three months at my best, at my best self. This is good. This is good. Mm -hmm. I think that's why we got to go to church on a regular basis. For sure. Right. You find yourself in the streets, you tell off oh, too long, just in the streets, loving it too. Or figuring out, I can't figure out why I'm feeling the way I feel. I've got all this stuff, but there's something else missing in my life. Mm -hmm. you, you have to be around um, that positive environment, man. Um, I would go with number eight is we got to do some work on pen and paper by ident identifying your strengths and your weaknesses, your strengths, and your blind spots. Mm -hmm. We we sometimes get into certain businesses or certain projects that our strengths won't carry us in this particular business. Yeah. Or our weaknesses continue to show up. So you're doing something that's predicated on your ability to promote, but you're not a promoter. Mm-hmm. It's predicated on you creating content, but one of your weaknesses is creating content. So before you get into it, you need to identify, I know I'm gonna have to do all of this content. This is a weakness for me. Let me mm -hmm. solve this problem right now. Mm -hmm. How can I not let this hinder the success of what I'm going after right now? Mm -hmm. We need to put ourselves in positions where our strengths can flourish. Mm -hmm. So if you are a people person, and you're saying, I'm gonna go do events, I'm gonna do events because I'm good with people. I'm going to do events because one of my strengths is my ability to make people feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe you're not going to be a motivational speaker, but maybe you're going into a career as a host because your strength is my ability to get people out of their seat, connecting with other people. That's my vibe. Yeah. I, you want to be on stage, but maybe you're not, you're, you're not as strong as a speaker. Mm -hmm. Maybe we consider being a host. I was telling Myron this and I, I did it for EYL. One of my major strengths is interviewing mm -hmm. because I'm able to pull out of people a lot more than they can give in an ad or a promotion of a thing. So there's events going on. So my strategy now is finding someone who has an event and interviewing them on their platform because you can think of all the reasons why somebody needs to buy but if you sit down with me one-on-one, -on -one, I'm going to make it a little stronger, a little deeper. Two, one of the issues with events is the 
the host of the event typically comes out, does a speech in the beginning, and they're going to close it out at the end, mm -hmm. right? A, a presentation of how they're feeling. I'm like, I want to start interviewing people during their event. If you put on an event, I, be, I need to be on stage with you pulling out how you feel throughout this event, what's going on, what you want for the people, because you're not going to be able to deliver that information in a pre-thought of presentation. Mm -hmm. There's only, you'll only answer certain questions that only I'm going to ask. That is one of my strengths, so I'm making it an offering. And I told Myron, I said, Myron, you got an event coming up. You should have me interview you on stage at your event. It'll create a different, a power. You'll be able to truly get off of your heart everything you wanted the people to have outside of information. Last year, I called, uh, I called uh, Rashad and Troy and said, hey, let me interview you about, uh, about InvestFest before InvestFest because y'all talk about it a lot. But there are some things that we're going to talk about in our interview that will really allow people to say, you know what, I want to be there. It's an hour-long interview. Yep. And I am not a hypocrite. For Podcast Summit, I had Jay Hill come interview me mm -hmm. about the event. Mm -hmm. Because there's only so many things you can say in an ad or a presentation. So I know that that's one of my strengths. So career-wise, I need to be doing something that leads to my strength. Yeah. There's some other things that I'm very, very weak at that I just won't touch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think that is uh, essential, understanding our strengths and our weaknesses, but further understanding if our strength and our weakness applies to this situation. Mm. It doesn't always apply. And then also beyond understanding our strengths and our weaknesses, understanding that while you may be strong at something, you still have to be willing to get better. You still mm -hmm. have to be willing to improve. There will still be people in the, in the room that that's their strength as well. That's yeah. also their gift. And they've mastered it at a greater level than you. So you still have to be willing to be a student to that information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, y'all, real quick. If y'all have an event coming up, send me a message. <laughs> Let's discuss, let's discuss numbers. It if there are work, any okay? women's only events coming Come on, up, talk about it. Let me get that. <laughs> Come on with it. Man, I think this was, it started out aggressive. For sure. But then it ended up very helpful. This was good. Really good. This was good because even going through this list, like these, these indicators about whether or not you're serious about building your business or if you're playing, these indicators are relevant at any level of business, yes. at any level of business. Um, I want to give a bonus. Did we do seven or eight? Eight. Eight. So just the bonus number nine is minimal procrastination. <sighs> if you find yourself significantly procrastinating, it's a habit that you can change. It's a habit that you have to work on. You have you have total control over procrastination, mm -hmm. right? Total control over procrastination. If you are over procra overly procrastinating and you'll know it, you'll know because you're not getting anything done. Everything is late. You're missing every deadline. You're not making the money. You're not putting out, out things. Everything is off track. Mm -hmm. You'll know it. Minimal procrastination is acceptable because we, we are not perfect people. So you will procrastinate at some things. You will miss the mark in certain areas. But you have an idea. And I learned something about procrastination. Sometimes procrastination is not just your choice to not get up and move in your business. Sometimes if you find that you are severely procrastinating and you can't figure it out and you, you're struggling to fix it, you may want to talk to somebody because procrastination oftentimes can be masked as depression or depression mm. can oftentimes be masked as procrastination. So I don't want you to confuse the two. If it's significant for you, you can't get out of the bed. You can't get off the sofa. That might be a little bit more than procrastination, but I'm talking to people who are action takers. I am talking to people who see that something has to get done, but you're choosing to do everything other than the thing that you are supposed to do. You are procrastinating. I am talking about the person who was supposed to do it at one o'clock but for whatever reason you do it at four o'clock mm -hmm. you are a procrastinator okay and you know that you are serious if you have the most minimal procrastination <laughs> habits in your life facts um well maybe like a bonus number 10 okay it's not really a bonus it's just number, <laughs> number 10, 10. Right? okay number 10 <laughs> uh limiting distractions mm -hmm. and 
we actually talked about it last week on our call that we need to identify what the distractions are. Mm -hmm. There's some things that are distracting us and we don't know why we're not getting ahead, but it's these, it's these pesky distractions. Mm -hmm. Social media is a huge distraction. If you really, really think through all the time you spend doing nothing and all the time you could be putting into your business, during the time that you're doing nothing on social media, you realize that's a huge distraction. One of my huge distractions was Monopoly. We play Monopoly mm -hmm. online on the app. We got a group chat where we go crazy. Mm -hmm. And we play, it's like two, three times a day. On our phone, on the app. Mm -hmm. And like we can kind of talk. Every game is going to be 45 minutes to an hour and a half. Yeah. Last week, I had to decide not to play at all. And people in the chat like, yo, what's up? What's up? What are we doing? What are we doing? And I and I had to took, take the week off. Surprisingly, last week was one of my most productive weeks that I've had in a while. With these little windows of time that I took away from the distraction that I put into my business, it starts to it starts to expand. It starts to 10x the results because the the lack of distraction multiplies mm -hmm. the lack of distraction compounds work compounds you could do one hour one hour one hour but it's not like the three hours equal three hours of work even though it's separate three hours can equal 10 hours of productivity mm -hmm. when one hour of work equals one hour of productivity but it starts to compound over time because the things that happen and it, it could be little things there's some, there's small little um, tasks that need to get done but when they don't get done if too many pile up then I have to spend a day doing it Yeah. when I could just take three minutes to do it now four yeah. minutes to do it now and let me tell you something about distractions mm. distractions are convenient ooh I feel good too <laughs> distractions feel good they're right here on love your phone a good, love a good they're, distraction a distraction is convenient that phone call from mm -hmm. that person you want to hear from when you should be working yeah. distraction that monopoly game that app that social media, whatever, they are convenient, but it's the most convenient way for you to stay broke. Facts. Distractions are the most convenient way for you to stay broke. It's a slow rock, too. It's a slow mm. rock because even, even if at David's pay grade, tax bracket, if he continue, if you continue to honor those distractions and you're mm -hmm. continuously putting things off, you will notice that over time it's a compounding effect of your income decreasing and decreasing mm -hmm. and decreasing and eventually it will be nothing for sure your distractions are convenient they are there they are meant to distract they are meant to tease and tempt and feel amazing but it will leave you penniless facts and we have to get to work come on we gotta get to work you have to find the time to block out the distractions it's like okay if if you want to play the game if you want to take the calls if you want to do those things find times identify the times where you can do it Go crazy in those two hours that go you said crazy. you can do it. Go crazy. But in that block of time where you said you need to be focused on getting more contracts, getting more customers, closing more deals, go crazy on that. Facts. Reward yourself with a distraction, with a healthy distraction. Don't be ruled by your distractions. This is good. All right, look, man. We actually have a meeting now. And uh, me and Donnie are going to uh, hash out some stuff that we really need to get things on track for the business. And we are, we're both very intentional about growth. So hopefully you all are doing things that are intentional about growth. You can't just let things happen. Uh, uh, I want to say it was Napoleon Hill. It was it Napoleon Hill? Um, I think it was Napoleon Hill. He called these people drifters. You just drift through life and you let life happen to you. I'm telling you that's danger. So um, thank y'all so much. Make sure you, if you need an environment, you need these kind of conversations on a regular basis. Yeah. Join Actionable CEO or the morning meetup immediately. Immediately. E is it immediately? E immediately. It's immediately, in, in, immediately. But it said immediately. That's what Me saying say. E caused you to do E, which is. Uh, immediately. I when say you're immediately. in the wrong environment. Yeah, for sure. 
Toxic distractions. Um, anyway, you guys, join Actionable CEO and Morning Meetup. You need both of the communities. They are very similar in nature, but offer some very, very drastic differences as well. And it's about being in the rooms, all of the rooms that you can be in, all of the rooms that you can afford to be in. Don't miss out on the places that you should be in. That's another indicator that you are serious about building your business and you're not playing around. Drop it in the comments if you received anything from this episode, which I know you did. Number one, which one thing, maybe two, resonated with you the most? What are you guilty of? Where are you showing up where you're super serious? Or where are you admittedly showing up where you're playing and everybody else drop is no longer playtime, no longer playtime in the comments. So we know that you're serious about building. We'll see y'all next week. Bye. If you like the video that you just watched, click this one. You're going to like this one, maybe even more. Click it right now. There we go. There it is. There it is.